I'm gonna show you a fun way to make a gift plate. We've done this through the years and it's simple, it's cheap, and it's very, very personal. We get these clear glass plates at Walmart for a dollar. They've been there for years. Um, as long as they keep having them, we're gonna keep using them because it's perfect for placing against whatever picture you want to use as a template to draw your graphic. You can place this plate, the back of the plate, right up against your computer screen. Be gentle, of course, but it should be smooth and flat. And simply use a Sharpie marker directly on the top of the plate. And we found that Sharpie markers are great uh, to use on glass, even on mirrors. It wipes off um, very easily. And this is just temporary. So. Our graphic is gonna be drawn on the top of the plate, but the paint is going underneath the plate. So eating on this plate is not gonna be eating directly on top of the paint. This allows the color to come through and your food to remain on the nice scrubbable glass surface. So you just center it the way you want it and as best you can, trace around that shape, this, as I said, will wipe off very easily when you're done. And now we pull it away and we've got ourselves a very nice template to work off of. Remember, this is the top part of the plate, but we are going to be painting on the back. So you can get a reverse image if it matters. So again, this is just gonna wipe off very easily when you're done. So again, you don't wanna paint on the top of the plate. You wanna turn it over and paint on the back surface and you will not have any problem painting over the lines. You're not gonna erase them. They're gonna stay right where you drew them. Now we're using something called gallery glass and this is a type of paint that's designed to be used on a slick glass surface just like this. We're making a black bear and we want to be able to see the whites of his eyes. So we're putting the white paint on as the first layer and we only need a little, but this is a nice fine, a very fine tip bottle. These are the smaller bottles. We're also gonna use the white to make just a little bit of a separation on these lines between the ears, between the legs. So the black doesn't all run together. Now we're gonna fill in with black. Um, I have liquid leading, and I'm using this as the black. It's a very nice solid fill. You may wanna test the flow rate on a scrap something first to make sure you have good control of how, that's, how that line is gonna go. We'll go around the outside first. Now, if you get out of alignment or you get too much, you can use a toothpick to just scoop up the extra and, uh, or a paintbrush. Um, I use Q-tips a lot of times, see? These work well. And you can clean that up. It actually wipes right off. And so you can work that until it looks the way you want. I'm going to avoid the areas where there's white paint to give it a little more time to dry and I'll start working on these other larger areas first. We're gonna... We've got plenty of paint on here. We just need to smear it around now. I'm just using a pointy toothpick and going in a little circular pattern. If that texture shows up on the other side, that's fine because he's got black fur. He's got a lot of it. So as we're swirling this and spreading it out, you can see what it looks like on the other side, nice and solid. Sometimes you may have to wash out these lids in order to 
get dried paint out of the way so you don't end up squirting a big glob where you don't want it. And we've decided we're not gonna use those interior lines that were in our original drawing. We're just gonna fill it all in with black fur everywhere. Moving very carefully as we come up against the white line we made. Just pushing it, the black paint against it rather than dragging the tip into the white paint. So just take your time with it and enjoy the process. These ears are looking awfully tall for a bear. <laughs> so after this dries, then actually it gets very rubbery and we'll be able to um, trim off the ears. We'll be able to make them shorter. Now when we flip it over, we can see our progress and I can see that where the white paint is, is a little too wide. I need to actually bring that black paint up against the white line. We'll dry it a little faster with a hair dryer and then I'll show you how to make the changes. Now that this is dry to the touch, we're going to use a toothpick to reshape this a little bit. Our ears got a little out of control. Now that it's dry, we're gonna lower the other ear too. I'm getting underneath it and spinning a little with the toothpick. It's still wet underneath it looks like. You can see how rubbery it is. Now in the picture you'll notice there is a little brown nose for this bear. And I thought we might just want a solid black bear, but I think we do want that brown nose. So we're gonna actually remove part of this now. It's um, not as hard as you might think. Once it's dry, it gets rubbery. And you can see how it lifts. And you can also use, because in this case, we're going to go in a straight line, you could also use a razor blade. Just come right across where you wanna be and scrape it off. This black line, remember, is our marker line that's still there because it's on the reverse side. Okay, we don't have brown, so we're just gonna mix up a little bit of brown ourselves. Put in a drop of red. We just wanna get a little bit of that um, tan color, so we'll put a drop of black in. Let's see what we've got. All we need is a little brown nose bear. That first batch was just a little too dark, so we did a second batch without black, and we're using a Q-tip to put this on. We find both work, Q-tip or toothpick. All right, we found the color we liked for the nose, and then I've also dabbed it in a few places on the back here, and even going over the this white line that we had, because it makes it stand out less. It's not really a detail we're trying to draw attention to. It darkens it, and then on the other side, it looks a little more natural. So uh, the last thing to do is to give him an eyeball that looks like an eyeball. So using our toothpick, because this white paint has already dried, you know, we are taking this little toothpick to kind of create another little hole. We're scraping to make sure we're making an area on the surface of the glass that's going to have black in it. Now, my toothpick already had a little bit of black paint. So after I've scraped around here, I'm gonna just turn it over and see if that's enough or if we need to add more black. And we may have to wipe off our marker in order to tell. So any place where there's black paint you don't want, you can simply rub off. It's dry, as long as it's dry, um, you can really just rub this off with your fingernail now and clean all these edges up. You can just literally push this with your fingernail to the shape you want and clean off any edges. Now, because we still have that marker on the other side, this isn't quite dry, so we're not gonna set this down, but we do wanna wipe off our marker lines. We've got a little bit of alcohol on a napkin, and it just completely comes off. 
you can see what you've got. So that's one way to make a custom plate with any design you want.